Yeah. Okay, I'm live. Let's press. Why is that so quiet? Uh, let's find out. There you go. There you go. Lovely. Hello, everybody. What's up? Uh, so, you know, a while ago, if you don't know, we start off with a bit of a ramble because we're live. So you got to talk and say nothing for a little bit uh, for when people come in. Um, I've got I've got the gear out. I've got the models. I have uh, all of the all of the stuff over here. Uh, so if you want to talk some nightmare, we can talk some nightmare. Um, that was kind of the inspiration for doing this because you know it's nightmare day and um, a lot of people on the poll I asked the most popular result for when should I stream was Saturday so I thought this would be a great test we've got in theory the most popular day and then we've also got um, all of the stuff uh, that's releasing so maybe a good one. Oh, we are live lovely good to know uh, so let's give it a crack. Uh, hey, if you're in chat, what's up? Say hi. What are you working on today? I know the Americans, uh, you're very early still, early in the day, or out shopping maybe, I don't really know. Uh, for the for the Euros, what's up? What's up? Real OGs there. Uh, so, obviously, um, you know, this, this time I only went and did one, uh, one video for my, for my, for, for Nightmare, because I felt like, uh, that's, that's where my vibe is these days. I'm not really that into in-depth tactical guides, uh, so I just didn't do them this time. Uh, but hopefully you still enjoyed my product review, which, uh, I think answered a lot of questions, maybe. But if you have more questions, we've got the book here, feel free to ask in chat, we can discuss. If nobody wants to talk about Nightmare, I will just get out my models and start painting uh, for the next hour and a half and then finish half an hour early. So, you're cool. You're cool. Uh, so, with that said, let's talk about Nightmare for a little bit, I guess. Maybe. Hello, <coughs> Tabletop Impulse. Grizzly Gladdy, painting uh, that most exciting oh, rhino. <sighs> yeah, well, that's a model. That's the model. <coughs> you know, the more I see, um, uh, once again, uh, Pepsi Max, I am open to sponsorships if you're out there. So, you know, hit me up. Thank you. Um, a lot of people uh, actually ask me, Andy, why don't you ever take sponsorships uh, like on the channel? And the answer is nobody offers them to me. So, there you go. Uh, yes. I thought this was pre-order week. It is pre-order weekend. Yes, that's correct. Uh, you, uh, I hope you already pre-ordered because apparently not easy to get them. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people online. It seems like, let's start with the controversy. Uh, so I, I just saw it on, on Reddit as I was browsing just before I, start, I began. Um, it seems like you can get... No, so, you know, I, I think it was Warpfire Gaming said, you know, we asked for hundreds and they've decided to send us nine. Um, and I've heard, uh, no, Mr. Hylian Aziani, uh, I get the, a review copy uh, from GW, so I get this two weeks early. So today is the, is the pre-order goes live. So everyone that gets the early copy can do a review in any format they want or not do a review. Um, and then in two weeks, so I think that's the 16th of April, maybe, uh, then it will, it's not the 16th, is it? It's around then. Um, then everybody, that's that's actual release day. So, yes. I was saying something, but I forgot. So that's cool. Uh, cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> Good evening, double hello. Oh, hey, if you're a subscriber to my channel, I'd like to give you a... Oh, if you're a subscriber to my channel and you've hit the like button on this video, I would like to give you a big... Double hello. Wow. Yes, so Warpfire Gaming, um, I've heard a... You know, they've asked for hundreds, um, and they've been told they get nine. I've heard the nine number from a few other places. 
Um, in fairness, that's a step up from the Into the Dark season, where apparently people were being sent, you know, two or three tops. So, okay. And um, what we've noticed, or what I've noticed, and I assume is the trend going forwards over the last few releases, is that GW seems to be sending very, very limited amounts to um, local game stores for pre-orders for the first week. And then it seems like after a week of pre-orders, they are then releasing more copies However, to the local game stores. However, um, it also seems like what they're doing is they are keeping their own stocks. So if you buy it from, so it always seems to be in stock for a little bit longer on the Games Workshop website itself. Now, are they just trying to kind of make a bit more money? forcing you to buy a retail price instead of go to a local game store or are they legitimately just have seen how fast they're selling out and so they are uh, trying to like be more sure of how quickly they're going to sell out I don't, I don't know like I don't know what they're thinking and a hello to Nightfall EDH uh, what does EDH stand for I query um, yes. Uh, yes. I suspect he said that because I've, I've got a very small number of uh, viewers. But that's my vibe. I'm cool with it. There's there's no need to get freaking out. Hello, Major Tom. Yes. Uh, thank you, in that case, to Mr. T.I. for sending his, his groupies to me. Um, are there any bad war enthusiasts? Sure. Maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. May maybe there are some. Do you see any possibilities for combining the Nightmare and Into the Dark Terrain? Mm. You feel the generator is thematic for ITD as well. We'd love to hear your opinion. So I assume by uh, Nightmare, I assume you don't mean that this is the only Nightmare Terrain. This bad boy here. I assume you mean Beta Decima uh, because the generator came in the original Salvation Box uh, as a narrative piece. Yeah, of course. Like, I think they fit um, thematically very well. Like, you could put the first pieces of Beta Decima terrain, narrative terrain, into into the dark, and it would totally fit. 100%. Um, do you need to? Probably not. No. Um, I think that if you have the Into the Dark set, and you have the narrative terrain from any of those boxes, you have enough terrain. However, if you for some reason missed some of those narrative boxes, but you have the Into the Dark Terrain, then yeah, uh, the first, the Salvation Box would work well with that, I think. Yeah. Elder Dragon Highlander, the old name for magic. You've, 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 oh, Elder Dragon Highlander. Okay, you have indeed uh, lost me on that one. Never been super into magic, sadly. Astor 89, I did um, already give out the double hello, I've got to be honest with you. Um, running, a, uh, I will not be running a hobby challenge, uh, I promise you that. Hobby challenge actually paints some bloody models on stream. There you go, that's a shout, that's Mr. T.I., he's got to do that. Hello back, so this one for you. Oh, well thank you very much Astor 89 for the double hello in return. Have experimented a little with half into the dark and half open with friends. Want to try out Beta Decima without the pool? <coughs> I think it's a great idea. Um, I've said it. I've never actually played it, but it really feels like for Beta Decima, playing without the dangerous area is probably a better game. With the minor practical proviso of you will knock your terrain over. Like, one of the positive things that it... Um, it that uh, the not being able to move on the floor underneath all of your platforms is you will you will knock your stuff you won't knock your stuff over because you can't get there yeah will the terrain pieces ever be sold separately salvation mm. i'm gonna say uh, yes and i i want to say no because it looks like such bad terrain to sell separately 
But the reason I'm going to say yes is because if you look at Warcry, I believe that they have actually sold their terrain separately. So if you want to buy just the Maw Pit, you know, the Sarlacc Pit, you can buy that. So I'm going to say yes. Talking of Warcry, I'm pretty hyped to go out and buy. I, I haven't done it. It's Warcry, so I assume it's still available. Um, the Pyre and Blood box. Those Lumineth really speak to me. The, uh, the, the Night Haunt less so, but I like the Lumineth and I like the um, the terrain. Like, it's a, it's a, a statue's head. I'm probably going to pick those up, to be honest. I haven't done it yet, but it's Warcry, so it won't be out of stock yet. So, it's fine. Okay. Right, with that done, is there anything else uh, we actually want to talk about? Does anybody have any questions about Nightmare? I assume that if you're here, you've already watched people's reviews, and so you're kind of already balls deep in it, and you don't really need to be told more. Um, you've already made up your own decisions. My patrons um, obviously got an, unbo uh, an unboxing, which I know some people like. They also got a full Man Reads book, so I have read through all of this. Um, I will say, so if you've seen my channel so far, I have done a review of this as a product, but I, I had wanted to do a second video. And um, the second video I was going to do was going to be Pyre and Blood. Yes, that's not out today, that's pre-ordered today. Um, so the second video I was go thinking of doing was actually a, um, a, law, a law video. I was going to read the book, audiobook style, right? I thought, that might be right up some people's streets. I like law. I had just come off the back of doing the War Machine law video and wanted to do a bit more law. Um, and thought that after the War Machine one, I was kind of getting into it and like being a bit of a law keeper. So I thought, hey, let's go ahead and do some Kill Team law. Let's really get into it. Let's like really soak up that, that dark, edgy satire that it's going to do. And I began reading and I got so bored. I didn't, I like, I, I read like, half of the law and I, just, I was just so bored it wasn't good it wasn't interesting it was even if you're looking at it as like dark satire it's like it wasn't it was boring so i didn't do that and i'm really annoyed about that because i i really wanted to do it yeah so i, I was reading it with the absolute best intent i'm thinking night lords they're cool mandrakes they're cool let's learn something about that law Maybe I just don't have the eye for it, and some law tubers are going to hit us with some big Night Lord conspiracy theories, but it, it was not for me. I know, Kill Team Ken. I wanted it too. I wanted it too. But there we go. Will the terrain piece... Uh, sorry, no, you asked again. Maybe separately all packaged together from all four of this... Se they might do that. They haven't done that before. It would be a new product for them. I don't see them doing it, but you never know. If I'm honest, I see Beta Decima as being a throwaway release. Um, and I, I would not... Keeping terrain in stock for some reason isn't something GW does. Everyone complains, obviously, about the recent Stormcast getting pruned and, like, losing your models there. My man, we have lost terrain models constantly. GW does not keep that in stock. Which is really frustrating because some of their kits are beautiful and they're gone. Herrick Games in the US asked for... Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, Meticulous Chaos. Herrick Games in the US asked for 150. I got only nine as well. Okay, that's the nine number as well. I tried to pre-order my FLGS yesterday. they called me when the GW pre order went live. They told me to... Okay. Yeah, so that's what I kind of assumed. Like, it seems like they are keeping stock back for themselves. I wouldn't be surprised if in a week's time we see the local game stores saying, hey, we've been given more allocation. So, check that out. That seems to have been what they've done before. Yeah. Uh, but there's no guarantee. So, yeah, like, you're kind, if, you want, if you want the guarantee, you're kind of forced to go GW. Is there going to be some nurse for Mandrake soon after launch? They seem pretty good, at least on paper. Uh, can you expound, expound upon the biz on that SH? They didn't jump out to me as instantly... OP broken. They seemed like they might be mid, mid to upper, but like that's where you want a team to be, pretty mid. Um, yeah, they didn't instantly seem totally OP to me. 
I think the Night Lords are the stronger team, but me I haven't watched any other creators' videos, so I, and I don't know their opinions. So maybe other people have already said, oh, Mandrake's OP broken. Um, they're going to wreck everybody's face. Um, and Night Lord's totally fine. Whereas I was almost the other way around. Which either means I don't understand the game, um, or the teams were in a great place because everybody looks at them and says, I don't know, maybe this. Uh, who knows? <coughs> 40k as satire died a long time ago, sadly. Uh, yes, well, see... <laughs> I've been Googling satire. Uh, the real question is, uh, was satire, was it a Horatian, Manipian, or uh, Juvenilian satire? Uh, I was actually watching this the other day. Somebody claimed it was a Men, uh, Men, Men, Meninian satire. I'm like, no, it's not. It's clearly a Juvenilian satire. Um, but whatever. I guess everyone can interpret things in their own way, can't they? It's not a Manipian satire, but whatever, whatever, it's not the point. I'm not going to go into that right now. That's for a video essay about different forms of satire and in the way the ways in which GW fails in all of three of them. It's not the point, though, but I agree. Uh, it, no, I can't say I don't agree because I haven't read enough law, recent law um, to truly say if it is dead as satire. It doesn't appear like it's satire to me. Um, but that's the thing. Anyway, moving on. Let's not get into the, the, the satire genres. Um, crazy that Pyre and Flood is still available on the store, which I was in AOS. But it's not crazy, is it? It's not at all crazy. Things should be able to be purchased more than an hour out. I agree. If I miss the um, Pyre and Flood pre-order because I'm here chatting to you all, um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to pick up those Lumineth on eBay, that's for sure. Because uh, they speak to me. I don't really know why. I, you know, I do know why. You know why? Because I just miss some classic fantasy. Just love that fant, yo. But in general, Age of Sigmar just misses that shot completely. You know, um, it's a warning shot that's a mile wide, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. However, when it comes to Lumineth, I can kind of get behind their a little bit funky high elves. So I can kind of make that work in my head. Mandrakes feel like they are going to score recon secondary super trivially, but I don't. Yes, I agree. Um, very clearly, as we even saw in the Warhammer Plus back rep, they score some of those really, really easily. Um, to the point that it's a bit mad. Yeah, totally agreed. Regardless of debates on both teams' power, defiantly, another release that will make many uh, reconsidered terrain placements for Satire AOS seems more in that direction. Feck, for example. Okay, okay. Well, I don't think people are going to reconsider terrain placements. I think people are just going to say, oh, yeah, that's how the game works now. Um, because, you know, we had melee completely dominate for ages and frankly still dominating um, in a lot of, like, levels of play. And people just aren't going to lower heavy terrain balls. So, is what it is. Which, in fairness, is probably correct. So... Maybe, I don't know, maybe Mandrakes will be, hey, you want to play on heavy boards? Okay, Mandrakes. Mandrakes, bang. Uh, hola. Hola. Makaso Maya. Uh, I'm here, for, I'm there for that. Yes, I don't know how I'm going to work that into a video, uh, a video essay, but one day that satire video is coming, I'm sure. Uh, if you're going to speculate, sorry, hold on. For satire, AOS seems to be more in that direction. I have read some AOS fiction. I, but I, I can't remember. It, I think it was called God Eater, uh, which was like a Lumineth Realm Lords um, book. Um, I've read the Soul Wars book. That's about it. I think that's all I've read. So I haven't read much. However, my general vibe from AOS... Star sorry... The FEC, the FEC, Flesh Eater Courts. 
My, so I haven't read any Flesh Eater Court actual lore. My general impression is that the whole these are Bretonians is kind of a meme. And it's not, it's, you know, it, it's there if you want to see it. That might have changed with their recent releases because I know some of their releases were very on the nose, like this guy is a judge. So that's possible. I haven't read enough. I haven't read enough. Um, if I were to speculate, will current bespoke kill teams be relevant to the next year? Oh, mm. <coughs> part of you wants them to be, part of me wants terminating and kills him. So, okay. You're saying, you're implying that you want the next edition of Kill Team to be an entire edition of Power Creep. So instead of having Tactical Marines, we now have Terminators. Instead of having Mandrakes, we now have Incubi. Instead of having uh, Vet Guard, we have Ogrins. You know, something like that. Like, everything gets a power. I don't think we're going to get that in reality. Um... Are we just going to get general power creep? I don't think so. Um, I think what might happen, if we want to look at a worst case scenario, is when they do the compendium for all of our specialist teams to go into, they, they just tweak a few things down a notch. Just, you know, little bits, little bits and pieces. But very intentionally, uh, just, you know, a few stat points tweaked down. Nothing big. Um, and then they will continue with whatever the next edition's teams are at, the, at this same baseline. That might be a thing that happens. I, I will say, though, you know, like, for what I know of the team that are trying to balance this, they do genuinely seem to be trying to do their absolute best to make this not a game with huge power creep, you know? Like, and and in general, I, I, I think from what we've seen, they've done a really good job. I don't think there's much power creep, any power creep really in Kill Team. There are some outliers, there are some strong teams and some weak teams, but I don't think there's any like intentional power creep. Could be wrong. You know, like just the other day, uh, I saw, you know, they did the Warhammer community posted their uh, Kill Team MetaWatch article. And they then posted to Facebook, uh, as they do, you know. And like, uh, one of the comments that was highlighted to me as I was just flicking through Facebook, doom scrolling, somebody saying, Okay, and when are you going to fix all of the uh, imbalances in Kill Team? This is the most broken rule set of GW ever. And it's like, what is this guy smoking? I, I legit don't know. Even if he's taking into account Compendium, game's not that broken. Compendium has some great releases. Are Compendium winning against specialist teams? Not really, but it's not that broken. Cool. <clears throat> uh, I have to say I really like the new terrain feature in my gaming group. We play a lot of narrative. I assume you mean just the whole beta decima? If so, that's great. It's really cool. Um, you know, like what you like, and don't let other people tell you what you like is bad. AOS is just out D and D and D. I don't quite know what you mean by that. Um, I like D and D. I think Age of Sigma is a bit silly. I'm not really a D and D guy though. Weirdly, I can't even say I'm a Lord of the Rings guy because let me tell you, if I was a Lord of the Rings guy, I would probably be playing middle Earth strategy battle game or Mesburger. Uh, but, oh my god, those models suck. A return to tape measures. Oh, yeah, I know a lot of people are into that. Oh. If I could run a poll. Can I do that? Let's have a look. No. No, I cannot. In theory, there's a way I can run a poll. <coughs> I'm going to run a poll. I'm going to run a poll. Uh, after I finish this, it's going to be, do we want the widgets to stay for the next edition of Kill Team? Obviously, GW has already made this decision, but I don't know. Do shapes stay, or do we change the shapes? I think that the shapes, I like the shapes. Let's be clear, I do like the shapes. 
I think they're a solid design decision. But I do not think they have been implemented as well as they could, as we just saw the other day where um, Warp Coven got buffed. And they got buffed for a, a pentagon and a square. A red and a blue. I was like, what is this? They're really butting up against some of their design decisions. Uh, let, let's be clear. D&D is superheroes as fantasy characters. AOS is that turned up to 11. Okay. I, okay. I'm not sure I agree with that assessment, but I'm going to say okay. So there you go. I'm going to say okay. Cool. But superheroes are cool. Shapes or a template of some sort are a necessity at this point. Are they? Are they a necessity? We're not really talking about uh, Nightmare. So if people don't need me to have these objects on the on the screen, I'm going to put them away and I'm going to start painting. Because i got stuff to do, yo. Oh, I didn't bring the green... Oh, damn. Okay, never mind. Uh, if you do have any questions, just shout. Um, do, we, do we have anything we want to think about here. I don't know. It's a game. Past. Don't know what else to say. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, if you do want to see these models, I did like hold them up to the camera and show them off. Um, in the back rep. I think this guy's my favorite. I do rather like his uh, dead Marine, you know? It's pretty cool ass dead Marine. I don't know how I've painted him, because I, I can't really see what colours I did, but he's there. He's chilling. And then we've got um, the leader, who again, just a bit of a beast. Nice. There you go. I can't be bothered to show you them all. Um, let's have a look at one of the mandrakes, I guess. Why not? While I'm here, before I put them away forever. Yeah, I don't much care for the mandrakes. I don't know why. I should. I like the idea of them. I liked the old models. I don't think these guys are particularly gangster. That's a very, very, very big sad for me. Very big sad. But there you go. I'm happy with the job I did on them. Um, I just have a 40k 12 inch 6 inch stick with painted shapes on them. Good enough? Yeah? Yo, I've got a box of legionaries. Do you think some upgrade bits could make a good proxy? I think if you have a legionary squad, you have a night lord squad. The screamer. <laughs> AKA my, my girlfriend. <sighs> Which one's the screamer? Um, do you, do you mean, um, is that one of the, oh, him. Okay. What I did there. <laughs> My night lords look mentally stable. The biggest insult to a night lord ever. There you go. Well, I'm sorry, they're not meant to be mentally stable. That's on me. That's my bad. That's my bad. I do think the skin thief is the best looking model, actually. I, I, I think he's, he's, he's quite cool. There you go. Nice paint jobs. Thank you very much. There you go. Good stuff. Well, they are what they are. I'm okay with it. They work for me. <clears throat> You're not. Yeah, yeah. Even in the 40k and uh, even the 40k and OS games, I see use templates in the form of measuring widgets. They do use widget, but only for like the three inch, one inch thing, you're not really measuring, you're not using a 12 inch widget, you know, tape measures are dead and a barrier to really players from outside the GW, I mean, I agree, I don't, I think if you have to buy a, a big ass tape measure, you've done something hor horrendously wrong, you know, especially with 40k, if I'm honest, 
Sorry, Michael Grass. I I miss. I forgot to answer. I'll answer in a sec. Especially with 40k, where all of your ranges are so long, it really should just be like kill team. If you don't have a pistol, you can shoot. Like, just do that. <coughs> you can really notice the difference if you play something more like um, War Machine, where like a, a gun's range might be nine inches. And that's it. Um, a long gun is 14 inches. That's like the longest gun in the game. So it's, it's quite interesting to see um, the difference in design philosophy between those. Yeah. Whereas 40k balances it shooting with terrain. Something like War Machine does it with um, actual like range manipulation. So, when can we see a battle report? Good question, thank you. Uh, Connor McKay, thank you for the nice paint jobs. Uh, so, I might do a battle report with them. Um, it won't be an edited one, it will be a unedited. And if it's unedited and pre-recorded, it will be for patrons only. And if it's live streamed, it will indeed be for everyone. Um, I was considering that today, tonight's battle report would be a live stream, however, I don't, so I think, I don't think that um, live stream battle reports are particularly great. Viewing content, if you're only two people, when you play Kill Team, because you are constantly in the game. So that means if you do a good stream, you are mainly going to be talking to chat and playing a slow game. And that means who, who you don't really want to watch a two and a half hour Kill Team game, right? So... You really need that third person off camera to like entertain chat, I think. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and anyway, I struggle to even get two people. So getting a third means that I'd be, is what it is. Um, will I do one? We will see, is the question, is the answer, I don't know. Uh, and recently, um, I have been doing more gaming at my local game stores instead of here. There you go. <clears throat> How can you tell the Mandrakes apart? Uh, you can't. I suggest that you write on their base what they are. The style of the new ones aren't as brutal looking as the old ones. The old ones look like buff, otherworldly psychos. The new ones look thin and sad emo elves with lots of hair product. You think? I'm not sure. I, I genuinely don't know. That's... That's a better answer, a more concise answer than I could give, so fair. Um, why do all kill teams look so cool? Good question. You know, GW has uh, has blessed us this day with their pimpness. So. Are you basically allowed to... Yes. Uh, so, as, so from today at 10am GMT time... I'm allowed to do anything I want with these models and these rules. Yes, that's correct. That's how the GW embargo works, um, as are many other content creators. So, typically, I would expect uh, GMG, Gorilla Miniature Games, to do one, like, at, tomorrow or at some point during the week. Um, other channels might do one, might not. Um, the last few releases, I did one on my other channel, Tactical Skew which I'm wearing here, um, to clarify, for, for those in there, for the 45 people watching, uh, the reason I wear my merch is because this is all I own. I literally don't own other, other clothes. I've thrown them all away. I literally only wear my merch. Not because it's my merch and I'm trying to promote stuff. I just, it's all, it's literally all I own. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, for Madrix, give the specialist the top parts. Was, uh, yes, so when you build by default, from the rules book, the instruction manual, it, uh, the ones that by default use hair with a top knot are your five specialists. Yes, correct. Um, and sure enough, that's what I did because I followed it uh, by, by the guide. <clears throat> it's kind of weird, not gonna lie, but whatever. If that's what GW wants, that's what GW wants. Good for them. Right. So. What are we on? What are we on? 
36 minutes. Okay. Let's get painting. Guys, are we painting today? Are we not painting? <laughs> cool. Again, any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start rambling and make stuff up. And I've got nothing planned. That nightmare section was supposed to take a smidge longer. Okay. Where are we? Where, where do you need... I'm actually going to have to do it. So last time I did this stream, I s recorded... Um, you need it there. This is my objective marker. Now, this objective marker is so that you... is so that I, I need it closer to me. I'm, I'm not going to be able to paint like that. There you go. There you go. Okay. I can paint here like this. All right. I need to move to the side. There we go. Now we're sorted. Slash comes directly after we painting. Yeah. Well, that's the effect I have. What can I say? All right. What are we doing? Uh, I'm getting these stormcasts finished today. <clears throat> that means we need silver. Nice. Good. No, we don't. Ugh. Do I want to do the blue on these first? Yeah. No, I can do it afterwards. Let's do the silver, because the silver has to be done before these are finished. Um... The blue is optional. Right, lovely. I don't need that now, because I've readjusted the camera. <clears throat> Good hand action, got a lot of practice doing this, don't worry guys. Oh yeah. How do you feel about the new terrain piece? Cool, or oh, are we dancing? Mm. Uh, the new... I like the new terrain piece. I think it's really nice. Um, I think it's it has a great mixture of practicality and uh, seductive looks, if I'm honest. It's very erotic in a certain sense. Um, yeah, I think it's good. Um, it's, it's a nice chunky piece of terrain. So um, until I started filming with these, I've been just keeping all of my models, my Mandrakes and my Night Lords, on the piece of terrain. It's been a very good uh, base. And I like that practicality. It also has different levels all within the base. It's a nice piece of terrain. That's what I'm saying. All right. What am I doing? Lead Belcher. Oof. Cringe. I normally don't use Lead Belcher. Um... Especially when the pot won't stay open. You see, guys, notice I say I'm going to start doing hobby. Drop six views immediately. Outrageous. It says hobby in the, in the video title, guys. Come on. Get your hobby on. Uh, I also cannot keep this open. And that's frustrating me greatly. Okay. <clears throat> I'm painting the gutters for my Rebel Land Speeder. Now, I believe that's not Warhammer, is it? I want a real Star Wars kick at the moment. I don't know why. Don't know why. TBH. <coughs> right, let's see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Oh, why did I do so many bits? Oh, lame. I should do Neve first, shouldn't I? Neve. Oh, I haven't done her thing. This is a disaster. Good lord. Neve's going to take so long. Alright, fine. Needs to be Neve first, I guess. Let's begin the journey of paint. All those curves, you know it. You know it. I am sure I had something very similar to that terrain piece in the box my dishwasher came in. Quite possibly. It does, in many ways, resemble the classic... Um, you know, piece of funky looking egg carton terrain uh, that people get in random electronics. And I say so be it. So be it. 
I'm okay with that. Mess that up, all good. So, let's talk about something, shall we? Because whatever happens, I'm gonna paint these models, so I have to find something to talk about to entertain you, uh, as you are hopefully also painting. Removing the mold lines on Hero Quest minis. Now, I am a man of an age where I played Hero Quest, Not properly though, like, uh, you know, I think it was a case of my dad got it and I, for, for the kids, and we all kind of, I don't think any of us were old enough to like use rules, but it was like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Um, but no, luckily, despite remembering it all and that cool barbarian cover and having watched the Bardic reviews, I, I love a good Bardic review, um, luckily, missed me, so I did not buy it, I did buy Cursed City, which is indeed, you know, in a, in a similar sort of vein, um, kind of, you know, that board game, miniature game thing that GW does, but yeah, never, really, was never my vibe, was never my vibe. <clears throat> oh, what do I do with this? Oh, I don't know. Am I painting this lion silver? I literally can't tell. Uh, maybe. I'll come back to it. Okay. Yeah. No, um, I'm currently very into um, Star Wars. Don't know why. Hello to Zingbo. Gen X nihilism aside, it's an interesting looking piece. People use those packing people. They do, they're great. Yeah. Um, currently very into Star Wars, but currently making a good stand at not buying into Star Wars Legion. So well done me. Um, I have had that thought a few times over the last few um, months. Well, weeks. Let's not, you know, I'm not that strong. Jeez, let's say weeks. <clears throat> However, let me tell you that. Uh, right now, that vibe of not buying into another game system has absolutely locked down on me. Um, 100%. I don't have money. Uh, yesterday, I was told I, I've got to move out of my 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 flat and being evicted so um yeah that's a terrifying thought it's right on time as a as a as a what am i a millennial that's the word <coughs> as a single millennial i of course um have never owned anything in my life um and never really intend to so i just get kicked out I've never stayed in one place for longer than two years, and it's a year and a half here, so I'm off. Got getting kicked out soon. Ah, yeah, Shatterpoint. So, here's the thing. I don't really like, like Shatterpoint's cool, Shatterpoint's cool, and I like some things about it. But, um, it, it, okay, I mean, look, it's not the biggest deal, but I'm not actually that connected with Star Wars as, oh, I can zoom this in, can't I? Um, as, like, the people? The people, to me, are very nothing. So, like, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not an extended universe guy. Um, I'm a main movie guy. So all of these random people, these named characters uh, that are from nowhere, 
don't really speak to me when it comes to Star Wars. So I don't have this like, oh yeah, I can't wait to play a Sarge Ventress. I'm like, nah. Who's that? And when I say who's that, understand, I don't care. So if it's not like a mainline guy, like, you know, Anakin, Obi-Wan, I don't really care. I have no desire to play that. You know? So... I actually rather want generic guys that I can just make my own. That speaks to me way more when it comes to uh, Shadowpoint. And I hope they do that soon. Although, as you point out, as I have said before, nobody seems to really play it. X-Wing. Sorry, I'm skipping chat there. Uh, let me make sure I haven't missed something vital. <clears throat> yeah. It would have been nice to pick up the Nightmare box set if only DW would start actually manufacturing it. Yes, well, it would be nice if they uh, had stock, wouldn't it? You know? Like, very genuinely, GW is one of the few companies that can not support the game well enough that you cannot buy it and the game is still a success. So, it's great that GW is able to do that thanks to its strong IP in 40k but it sure would be nice if people could buy the could buy Kill Team, wouldn't it? It is what it is. I, I suspect that nobody is happy with the amount they're producing. Them included. You know? I could be wrong. It could all be a case of... <clears throat> GW produces the exact amount that it needs to produce so that it can sell out and... Um, they're not even looking at expected demand. They're looking at how much do they need to sell this year so that they can sell more next year so that they can have exponential growth showing for their stocks. So that actually wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. Uh, good evening to Brewster's Minions. Uh, we played a game of Dead Zone today. That was fun. That was fun. My first time playing Dead Zone in a while because next weekend is Salute in the UK. It takes place at the London XL Centre. And um, I'm going to that. And there's going to be... I'm, I'm going for two reasons, really. I'm going because there is... Um, Halo Flashpoint to be demoed. Although it is literally just Dead Zone, so I really don't need to go for that. Let's be honest. But there's also Corvus Belly there with Warcrow, and I want to see what they're doing. Um, there you go. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely more excited about Warcrow than I should be, knowing that nobody else is going to care. Which is frustrating. Because I see it, and I'm like, oh cool, a generic fantasy game. That's really awesome, that's exactly what I want. And everybody else is like, eh? If I want generic fantasy, I'll just do something else. I'll just play Age of Sigma or something. And I'm like, Age of Sigma is not generic fantasy. Um, you know? So, I don't know. Tough, tough one. Tough one. My Hodius uh, reported his GW rep said he could have as many Nightmare Boxes as, as he liked. Be nice if he could sell more than three then, right? I mean, that's great, if so. Um, maybe this whole... Um, you could only have nine is, is a US issue. So, that's possible. Could also be the reps wrong, you never know. How about X-Wing? Uh, yeah, I've recently bought X-Wing again. Um, let me tell you this, that took some figuring out. That was not an easy task, which it 
it should have been. Um, but after the community's talk of like 2.0, 2.5, <clears throat> I had to do a lot of research about what's actually legal. So, so that will inevitably become a video at some point to help guide others on their starting X-Wing in 2024 journey. Because you know what? It needs, it needs guiding. If you go onto the Atomic Mass Games website, they only show you like five ships, but there's still dozens you can buy that are legal. Why don't they show them to you on their website? I don't know. It's like, they still sell the models. They still have a rule set. Why are they? It's honestly like negligence as if they are actively trying to kill the game. You know, not to throw around big words too much, but I, I genuinely think the way they're treating it is purely as a sales item, not like their, their rules, is, is harmful to the game. It's crazy. But whatever. They don't care, I guess. I hope they fix it soon. Random thought, how confident are you that the White Dwarf team's uh, intercession and or structural suggestion will be supported by a new edition of Kill Team? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Justin goes away, right? I mean, that kind of tracks. They, they don't seem particularly into Justian as a thing that they want to support, so... I can definitely see that going. Um, the rest... So, I agree that I think White Dwarf teams are probably going to go. Definitely seems like it's going, like... If anything's getting lost, it's White Dwarf teams, isn't it? Which I suppose you could argue makes sense then that we're getting a new G Stealer Colts and a new Admech team. Not getting a new Admech team, sorry, that was a rumour, wasn't it, that never occurred. Uh, Alright, I'll take it back, I've got no clue. Um, you know, I, I was thinking, oh, well, they, they need to get rid of... Uh, they need to give us a new GSC team for when they get rid of uh, Wormcold. But uh, they are giving us that, but they're not giving us that dark admec team that was rumoured. So who knows what they're doing there. So I don't know. It seems possible. It seems possible, I guess. But I think, yep, uh, White Dwarf are going to go. I kind of feel like they're keep intercession. It would, I feel like it would be a mistake to lose intercession. Strike Force Justian, I mean, it took them so long to give them tack ops that who knows, right? Real, real wild card on, on that one, to be honest. We shall see. Well. Well, well, well. So we're um, 55 minutes in. We're an hour in. And... Apparently, people who answered the poll that they would like to see me on a Saturday for streaming were not being entirely truthful. Maybe it was a joke. Maybe. What if they gave a fancy new Marine Team Death Watch in the launch box of the new edition in that context? I can see it. Mm. Oh yeah, okay, sure, I can see that, I can see that, and as we know, um, they very much should do Death Watch. It's really strange that they did, never did Death Watch, let's be honest, they need to do Death Watch, 100%, we need a Death Watch kill team, in some form. That is definitely something we can all agree. Uh, I don't think anybody's against it. And then they can just go against any Xenos team. We don't care. 
I mean, logically, Tyranids, but whatever. Knowing GW, it would be another Eldar team. They do love their Eldar, which is quite amusing. Yeah. Sure enough, if you're into Eldar, uh, Kill Team has been quite the boon for you, hasn't it? <clears throat> Well, <coughs> you know, I've got to be honest, I'm, um, I'm a bit surprised. I thought people were going to be quite excited to check out uh, Kill Team Nightmare Live. Uh, so that's very strange. It could be that my finger is not on the pulse. It could be just that. Either way, I'm painting my models. So it is what it is. Sorry, chaps, chapesses, and chapai. Well, anyway, I guess I can waffle. So when it comes to Star Wars X-Wing, um, I had to do so much research because their website doesn't really say anything. It, I don't think it ever references the 2.5 rule set. So it turns out that's something that the community just made up. It doesn't really exist. Um, and so I was concerned that even 2.0 products weren't legal. I was like, oh God, what does this mean? Turns out, no. 2.0 products are all legal. 1.0 products have been completely removed. So when FFG released 2.0, they still supported X-Wing 1 products, right? And it was when it was only when they swapped to Atomic Mass that Atomic Mass said, okay, we are stopping support for these ships. So you cannot fly any of the 1.0 ships anymore. So what that means is that if you buy the black 2.0 packaging, you're good to go. That's a legal ship. Uh, again, the Atomic Mass Games website only has like five ships showing. They, I don't know what's going on there. Um, they need to update that. Because there's dozens of ships for each faction that are legal. But if you look on their side, it, it, it looks like there's about four ships total. Which is silly. They should not do that. <clears throat> yes, yeah, you could buy conversion kits to upgrade them from 1.0 to 2.0. That's right. Um, but AMG dropped that and said, no. If it doesn't have 2.0 packaging, it's not in the 2.0 game. And then if you buy some of the new stuff, maybe Tom, you can't expect a new player to go to a third party list builder first, you know? It all needs to be on the website. As someone, like I know lots of useless knowledge about 40K and I could guide someone into 4K super easy. However, even if you ignore that, if you are a new 40K player, yes, it is a daunting amount of things you have to learn, but the GW website, the GW store, does some good splash landing pages. And you can jump in and it tells you what to buy and does a really good job of that. Even though we all like to criticize the GW web store and it is bad, it is bad, it does a pretty solid job for new players. Hello, weekend minis. On the weekend, no less. The Atomic Mass Games website. I didn't know what was going on. Um, you know? So, GW knows what their audience is. They know that if you're into 40K, and you're not buying beginner products, you know what to buy. You've already accidentally gone balls deep. 
if you are looking to buy GW, it tells you exactly where to go and what to do and how to start. It is a beginner's website, and that is what they want. You know, which makes total sense. I didn't ask the community. I figured this all out on my own, Major Tom. Um, why, why? It feels silly to have to ask the community, how do I, like, what ship do I build? Or what ships are legal? That is not a question you need to ask a community. It should be very, very clear. Yes, I agree. Although, talking about Armada, a game I've never played. Both of my, my Galactic Republic and my Separatist Alliance starter Armada boxes have turned up. Uh, so that's pretty hype. It's pretty hype. Uh, MJ, a really shit with X-Wing and Armada. Yeah. When did you start the hobby? Um, I don't know exactly. So it was the 40k second edition box set with the Blood Angels on the front. Um, was the box set that I began at. My dad bought it for me at my local games workshop store in High Wycombe. There you go. Anyway, that's essentially uh, Neve Black Talon done. I just have to put some a wash on her and fix that and do her weapon, but she's done. Oh, and obviously the, the blood splatter. The final thing to bring it all together. Let's do Henrik the Wolf. I don't know if that's his name. That's just what I'm calling him. Pittsburgh. Hope the weekend is treating everyone well. Hello to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, uh, let me guess from my thorough American knowledge. Um, Pittsburgh. I'm going to say that's near New York City, not state. Correct? 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 Kids today don't know about the official cardboard or dreadnought. Ugh. Here's a hot, here's a question. If GW were to offer standees, free downloadable standees that you can cut out and they would say, this is playable in tournaments in our games. How many people do you think would actually do that? What do you think? I think not many. Or I think it would like instantly mark you out as like, oh, that guy is that kind of guy, you know? Um, they would never do that because it's 100% against their business model. I do understand that. But it would be interesting. A six hour drive, that's literally another country uh, for me. So I would consider that a miss. If I flew into an airport and they said, oh yeah, you're almost with me, it's just a six hour drive, I would say, I have, I am not near you, I am not going to go. <coughs> I think tons, but we would never hear of it because it would all be using home games. You know you can do it now, right? Like, you, you can just print off the pictures of the GW models. You can just make standees. And I've seen them. They don't look bad. It's, it's a little bit shocking, actually. If you put a little bit of effort into making a good standee, they totally work. They totally work. So, yeah, GW should obviously never do that. It would ruin their business. Well, that's not true. It wouldn't ruin their business. I'm being hyperbolic. Uh, it would mildly inconvenience them for a brief time. But, yeah, it's amusing nonetheless. Yeah, six hour drive for you, and me. yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. Six hour drive, but just the next thing, stayed over. 
cardboard dreadnoughts, we had deodorant now. Yeah. Well, those were legal in a time before, in, in the wild west of uh, legality, weren't they? Let's be honest. Yeah. I would like to get back out to the old, the old, the, the colonies, if you will, um, at some point, you know, but uh, maybe that will have to be like when the next edition drops or something, um, you know, I've, I've obviously done the tabletop tactics, not tactics, play on tabletop before so that that's kind of done so I wouldn't head there but yeah I don't know, maybe I, I want to do something big for whenever the next box drops that'd be exciting maybe although if I end up buying a house due to getting kicked out of here that I might not have any money so shockingly uh, going out to play 40 uh, kill team in Canada it was not a money-making venture so yeah, the old bank account had to absorb a little bit there, can't lie, can't lie. <clears throat> Rogue Trader and WP3 came with hard counters you could use for the scenarios in the books. Nice. I remember Warhammer Fantasy Battles being all those cards. Yes. Yes. That was really before. I, I don't think I actually played the game at that point, so not entirely relevant, uh, to be honest. That's the thing, though. I began in the hobby whenever that uh, second edition box was, but, you know, was I really in the hobby? I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so at all. It was much more a case of, you know, I was given something and then that that was that you know uh, and I did get more things throughout the years but I never played I, I don't know I, I never really was like super into it in regards to purchasing stuff but I was always into it always around it but uh, this was back before you know, social media and, and YouTube and such. So there wasn't really a way to consume content. I, I I was a kid. I don't know what I did. I don't know how I interacted with it. Pass. Hard pass. Hard pass. Who knows what I did in those mysterious days? Right. Well, this is fun, isn't it? So what have we got next week? We've got... I've really done them. Uh, I'm finally going to release that other War Machine video. And I'm going to release... the uh, the popularity video. So, which is the most popular game? Which I think that was a really interesting video. Like, which is the most popular game, you know? Um, the only downside to it being, of course, that actually the only thing you can really take away from it is that Adepticon needs to open up more spaces for tickets. But I was shocked by Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game getting 100 players. Like, that's really good. <clears throat> really cool to see. And then, uh, last weekend, I played my first ever game of Middle Earth Strategy Battle game, Mesperger. You stop calling it its full name, which was cool. I'm so, so conflicted on it because it almost seems like exactly the kind of game I want. So it's like, it's a, it's a fantasy game. Um, it's not too big. It's not too unwieldy. It's got a nice bit of back and forth. And it's got some interesting combat mechanics. So like, you know, there's there's just enough there to, to, to sink your teeth into. But my God, I can't stand those models. 
<clears throat> if I could just play Sigma models with the Mesker rule set, I, I actually think I'd be like all in, like genuinely. But f there's something in those Lord of the Rings models that just turned me off completely. That's pretty damning because I've I've bought Dead Zone models, so you know I've bought Mantic. I can stomach that, but not Mespka. Really weird. Really weird. I bought random things that never went together as a kid because I wanted to collect everything and only ever painted a quarter. You painted a quarter of your models? That is impressive. I think I don't, I don't think I painted anything. Uh, wish I knew what happened to all the old models I had though. Yeah, passed. I just stumbled across Star Wars Special Legion Spec Ops. It's the kill team of Legion. I recall it was released at exactly the same time as Shatterpoint was announced. No, it wasn't. It was released, like, within the same day that the new edition of Kill Team was announced. I remember. Yeah. Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> like, come on, guys. Um, predefined teams where every model is its own unit. That's been the only thing holding me back from Legion. Oh, okay. Well, check it out. I haven't looked into it at all. It doesn't seem like it gets much talk online, I will say. Which is a shame. Hey Glass, what's your favourite Age of Sigmar faction? Ugh. Man. Man. Uh, quick. Before I get to that, because that feels like a rabbit hole. Uh, Frank G, hey brother. Howdy brother. I really appreciate what you do for the community. It would be nice if you and the other Kane creators could reach out to GW about the issues they have. What power do you think- sorry. You might be um, misunderstanding the amount of power that content creators have. Also, the level of communication we are allowed to have with GW, um, if I'm honest. I don't know how you envision it, but it isn't that. Uh, I mean, I wish, you know. As I've said before, I fully suspect that... Nobody is happy with the amount of out of stock and hard to pre-orderness of Kill Team. I suspect that GW isn't happy because they realise they could sell more. The community obviously isn't happy because they're not getting the product they want. Yeah. I have to assume, I mean I have to assume that because there's no reason GW would stop people from getting as much as they clearly want. Because you're right. Every box has sold out really, really quickly for Kill Team for the last two years. Something's gone wrong. 100%. We have to assume it's a manufacturing limitation. And it's quite sad to think that right now they're actually doing better than they were before Leviathan. Uh, like from all reports, from what we can tell, it has become easier to get content post Leviathan. <clears throat> you just need models from multiple different boxes to make your Spec Ops team. So similar in that sense to kind of, oh no, not similar. Hmm. So they're kind of doing current edition kill team from a list building perspective, but they're not giving you a way to get all of those teams for, in one box. I, I don't mind that. I mean, I played the last edition of kill team. In fact, I quite enjoy buying multiple boxes of things to use like one model because then 
I feel like I've got more models for the larger game that I have aspirations to one day play. So I quite like it. It it works well with me. You know, that's that thing. Not that I dislike uh, kill teams. You know, I also like just buying one box. But I don't really see buying multiple boxes as, as a huge burden. Um, assuming that I intend to one day play the larger game. Whether or not I actually ever end up playing the, the larger game. You know? So that is not a negative for me at all. <clears throat> Frankly, I think this is why we are seeing a lot of AOS models going away. There has to be a breaking point for them of keeping what they already have and making shiny new things. <sighs> yeah. Kill team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you ignore like the practicalities of keeping that much stuff in stock, there's too much stuff. I'm actually pro model line reductions. And I'm going to be especially harsh here, perhaps. Um, I think that if GW says we're redoing these models, or even, hey, we're taking these models out of the range, but here's a list of models you can proxy them as. So I think if they'd just done that for evocators and said, hey, we're, we're dropping all the evocators, we're not going to update them to Thunderstrike armor, here is a, a list of data sheets that we are going to let you officially proxy them as. And it could just be liberators, right? Like, they don't have, like, any evocator is now a liberator. And I would actually welcome that change. Um, yeah. I realize that's a bit of a hot take. Uh, and, th and that I am too pro model churn. Um, based by how poorly received my uh, my Age of Sigma video was. But there we go. <coughs> it's going to be some sort of blocker in the supply chain, like it's not super surprising, it's happened so many times in the past, it doesn't make you feel better. I wonder what the lag in decisions for GW is between when they make a call versus when they just finally realize in the supply chain. System slash customer experience, got to be six months at least. Oh, minimum six months, right? Um... Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine it depends heavily on what they're trying to do. I wouldn't be surprised if a big order like Leviathan, I, I assume that has to be like a two year out decision. You know? Um, I, I assume that has to be two years out. We are setting um, a production order with the factories. And then they just hope that it, you know, and as the factories will, unless there's some huge global disaster, the factories will hit that supply deadline. And so they have to lock in really early. That would be my guess. Of course, we've got no, no clue. Right? But, oh, oh, I've got to do his, uh, his skirt as well. Don't forget the skirt. They make many different units because they sell. They do. That is true. Um... I accept that Marines sell. Are you saying that evocators don't sell? Honestly, I'm pretty I'm pretty cutthroat and like I'm okay with that. If models aren't selling, yeah, you should probably take them away. <coughs> that might be a bit of a harsh one. I do realize that people get very frustrated with that. Like, to me, it's a real shame that they're getting rid of those Warcry models. But if somebody were to then show me, like, sales data and say, nobody has bought one of these for the last year, I'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. I get that. You're right, get rid of it. I am easily swayed by numbers. That's my vibes. That's my vibes. 
DW has a problem. Back in the day, they could make a nicer space marine every few years. The quality of models they can make has plateaued for years, so now they have to make different units. Yes. I suppose. That seems fair. Oh, okay. Um, right. Well, in that case, yes, you're, you're, you're correct. I, I'd probably agree with that. Um, it, it does feel like just space marine cell. I don't think it's about the quality of the unit or having to make different ones. I think people are still, people would relish, relish more new units. You know what? I take it back. GW could release a dozen basic intercessor kits if they were just all the different chapters. And people would go and buy those. You could pick up your your Ultramarine, your Dark Angels, your Black Templars, your Space Wolves, and make them, like, they can all have the same poses and the same basic armor, but just make them, like, really, really customized, like, you know, wolf pelts, uh, wolf masks, etc. So, like, really different. People buy those. I don't particularly have an issue with the line removals, just be honest. These aren't selling. Again, I agree. However, GW refuses to do that, which is very frustrating. And as much as I like to be a, a refined consumer, I would love to say like, yes, GW should just be very open and, and honest with us. But I don't know if that's actually true. You know, like I like to think it is. But humans as a... As a, a person, if I may quote MIB, uh, a person is smart. People are dumb. So, you know. And have you seen the online communities? They are not happy. Something is really pissing in their cheerios. <clears throat> As someone new to AOS, I'm kind of confused by the decision to revamp the Stormcast. Like, I haven't seen the new versus old model in person, but from the pictures, the scale difference looks neg negligible. So, I have seen the new storm. Have you seen the new Stormcast? And have you seen the old Stormcast? That's the question. What, what have you seen in person? Dick's continuing those Warcry warbands wouldn't have been quite as bad if GW had actually decided to break the news in a Warcry article. <laughs> yeah. Forgotten game, right? But you know what? Uh, very genuinely, I'm not even sure if. Warcry is continuing. Like, from what I see online, it's not... It's obviously all a bit of a guess, a, a guess, right? It's all guesswork. GW will never give us that data. But it doesn't feel like it sells well. You know? And it's not a competitive game, so you're not really seeing whether there's big tournaments of it. So it's, it's pure gut feeling. And we're never going to know until they just scrap it, to be honest. And at the start of this edition, uh, or sorry, no, this season, there was, you know, like, oh, Warcry's gone down to only being... whatever, um, you know, like smaller boxes instead of big full terrain boxes. Clearly, it's a dying game. But then Kill Team did that too. And by everything we know, from Kill Team, we believe, is selling incredibly well. So that was apparently just the decision they made to do, like, from a business perspective. And then Kill Team followed suit. So, super interesting. You know, what everybody thought was happening, it's like, nope, that was something they must have decided two years ago, before the edition even began, sort of thing. <coughs> uh, just do my save well storage, etc. when I can go get models off the website. I would have to drink one. Fair, yes, 
Just don't say. Yeah. I definitely would be concerned if I was a Warcraft player. I agree. Concerning times for them. But how many, I don't know, like genuinely, I don't know. How many people are dedicated Warcryers? I feel like it's not a main game. I legitimately don't know the answer to that. Um, I don't really follow the Warcry space too, too closely. Um, I was a touch put off by how... Just how basic it was. Don't get me wrong, I think a basic game can be great fun to play. But I feel like it's probably not great for how to... Like, you know, to base a channel on and like... Do content for. Hence why I never really took a dive in. Um... Maybe I should play it a bit more, give it a, a bit more of a chance. To be fair. To be fair. <clears throat> the thing is though, if Warcry goes, Underworlds has to go. Far as we can tell, Warcry is, uh, Underworlds is like a total failure. Because Underworlds is supposed to be a competitive game. It should be a game that requires, or that, you know, has a big tournament scene. It's not. So that should be a game that we can look at metrics of that we have available to us. And see the success. But no, not at all. Which is a touch concerning, I feel. Definitely feels like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Can they really rejig it again? Is that going to work? I don't feel so. But hey, what do I know? Underworlds is a game I'd like to see succeed. And as I mentioned in the, in the last stream, I was... I was actually really excited to get the most recent Warcry box. But then, and, and I was, you know, because right now I'm doing a little bit of soul searching about what I really enjoy in the hobby. <clears throat> and I'm like, maybe I could be into that, you know, shorter games, blah, blah, blah. Travels easily, smaller model count, blah, blah, blah. Technically, you don't have to do any hobby and it's tournament legal. But then, um, nah. Nah, those models were some of the worst models I've seen in Warcry. Uh, Underworlds, sorry. So I didn't do anything with it. I, I was, yeah, I was actually legitimately let down by those models. I had just expected them to be standard Underworlds quality. Which means very good, you know? Like, even if it's not your thing... They tend to be very good. I thought these were arse. There you go. So it is. So it be. So it be. Alright. Well, this has not been a very Kill Team Nightmare stream. Um, and I guess this has been a great test. To see if people actually want to see stuff on Saturday. And I don't think they do. Which doesn't mean I won't stream on Saturday again. It just means I won't push myself to push on. To stream on Saturdays. Because in general the weekends are the ones I would have to drop the most often. Because I'm most often not here on a weekend. Uh, whereas during the week I have to work. So I have to be here generally. <clears throat> Right. Uh, Warcry is my main game, but you probably knew that already. Yes. Would Warcry be doing better if its release was staggered with Kill Team? It hasn't always been on the same day. I think this is some weird function of uh, Salvation getting pushed back so far. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I, I don't recall they've always been on the same weekend. 
Underworld's definitely on the way out. We have no way of knowing. And also, GW, I'm sure, has a marketing team and like, a, a, sorry, a corporate strategy team that decides we want to keep producing content in this space, even if we don't actually make profit on it because it pushes out this blah, blah, blah. Like that wouldn't surprise me at all if they want to compete in certain arenas, uh, which completely confound us and we will never know, but it's a thing. <clears throat> uh, I think Warcry could be easier. Get rid of teams that don't sell well, as from what I can see, the Warcry Warbands are less used in AOS than kill teams that are using 40k. Yes, it does seem that way, um, but that's because they were all for one faction. So, what can you do? The Underworld's Warbands suck to use in Sigma. They should just make them generics. Like, just say, this Warband, they all have the same weapon, and go. We don't need to see all five models having a different weapon. Like, you know, amalgamate it, guys, come on. Certainly, the brief time I was playing Age of Sigma, I, I really wanted to bring my Underworld team over. And I did, and I was like, I don't, I don't want to kill these guys first. They, I don't want to have to roll these guys in melee. <clears throat> Uh, I love the Underworlds models, TBH. Everyone does, they're amazing. I love that they're cheap in the US here and you can play them in AOS. Agreed. All the sculpts are unique and have personality. Agreed. Never plan on playing Underworlds that long. Such is the death of Underworlds. It's a shame. It's, a, it's not a bad concept of a game for me personally. Like, I could see it, in theory, being something that I'm, I was, I'm very into. In reality, it hasn't turned out that way, but... Honestly, more by happenstance than, than anything else, frankly. Sorry, happenstance. Yeah, everyone I know that likes Warcry dislikes Kill Team and vice versa. They are total opposites of the spectrum gaming. Yeah. Which is why every time I see on like Reddit or Facebook or something, people saying, Hey guys, I'm thinking of buying into either Warcry or Kill Team. Which one do you think is better? It's like, my man, you need to do some research. These are opposite games. Like, you need you need to know things about yourself and what you enjoy before we can tell you what to play here. <clears throat> I wonder if Underworlds would be more popular if it was set in the 40k universe in a popular setting like, say, Necromunda. It would be hugely more popular. There's not even a doubt about that. Just look at all other media. 40k just sells. People are mad for 40k like if you just set something in that universe it sells better than other universes that's just the way it is i have no doubt that the devs of those games at gw are just as pissed off as others uh, at how ridiculous a statement that is but they know it's true you know it is what it is it's very frustrating you know, like, honestly, it genuinely seems like the quality of rules don't matter. If it's a 40k product, it just sells, you know? It's ridiculous. But, hey, it's what it is. They get paid. Some. I wonder if I was... Yep, I try to remember not to try to figure out GW's moves because of Space Hulk. Who knows, man? We should only let people get it once every... T yeah, who knows? I do wonder how popular Space Hulk actually was, though. Like, I don't really know. I know that people in the community talk about it quite a lot. But, like, and again, we, we never know. It's not a game you would play in tournaments. It's not a game that you would get sales data for. So, it is what it is. We never know. More and more lately, I have been seeing people say, oh yeah, it's the best game. Blah, blah, blah. And recently, I actually played a game of it uh, because uh, Wes wanted to. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? 
Um, it was fine. There you go. It was fine. We only played the, like the first mission, so it's not really representative, but yeah, fine was was my ultimate takeaway. All right, guys. Well, I'm almost finished with this guy, and then we're then we're logging off. Um, I hope everybody's had some good hobby. I hope people weren't too distraught that uh, there hasn't actually been too much Kill Team Nightmare discussion. Nobody asked any questions, really, so I didn't have much to say. Which, you know, good. Good. So, uh, I'm thinking of picking up the Lumineth from that uh, Pyre and Blood thing. And I'm thinking... I might paint them as wood elves. Because you see, the thing is, I rarely buy things from Sigma to. I rarely buy things from Sigma to play, to in, envision Sigma. I just want to envision generic fantasy. So Lumineth, I look at, I'm like, oh, those make really cool wood elves. It's like. That's not a Sigma thing. It's like, yeah, I don't care. Because I don't really care about that much about Sigma. I care about what I want to do in my own head. Um, and I want Wood Elves. And um, you don't do Wood Elves anymore. So I'm going to do that. There you go. It's possible I, I'm, I have this whole thing backwards, to be honest. Uh, I don't think that's what you're meant to do. But yeah. It's what it is. It's what it is. <clears throat> also wanted to mention that I really enjoyed your tactical rock tier list. Thank you. Thank you. That was a big one, you know. I, I didn't want to let people down by ranking their tactical rock low. I wanted to, you know, give it the full appreciation. Um, hopefully other people also did a good... Uh, 1st of April video. Hello, Lord Inquisitor Vex. Unfortunately, you're, you're um, an hour and 40 minutes late, which means it's almost logging off time for me, actually. I'm just doing the last few pieces on my boy here. And then this guy's done. And I'll probably call it, because why not, I guess? I don't know. Is he done? I know I'm going to find something on him and just be like, oh yeah, I missed it. But, fine. Uh, here's a question for chat, um, actually. Tell me. Here we see Neve Black Talon. Okay. Now you see uh, this shoulder pad. Now you can't see brilliantly because of the lighting. That's my bad. Uh, but you see this shoulder pad and this knee back here. Okay, should they be silver instead of white? If they're white, they're going to stay exactly as they are. If they're silver, I will put silver on them. For context, let me show you the done models to show you what that silver is going to look like once I'm done with it. Um, and let's hope. So we see here. So you see, you've got that silver standing out. It, it's still a relatively light silver, but it, it does show. Okay, so these guys here are all, they're, they're all done, they've got their silver done, you know. Um, oh, I didn't even do that guy's shoulder pad. Oh, what a mistake. Okay, well I've changed that now. Awkward. Um. <clears throat> oh, that's a good one. Do the video while standing on a rock. You need to start painting your kill teams. You know what they say, Adolfo? The best time to start painting kill teams is yesterday. The second best time is now. Boo. Agreed. <clears throat> 
Turning Legionnaires into the new Nemesis Claw? As one should. Okay, I'm going to do her her shoulder pads. Silver, silver, silver. All right. People are very onto the silver, so you've convinced me. You've convinced me. I agreed. I thought it should have been silver, but I didn't want to break convention. Uh, but those models didn't have potential silvered shoulder pads. So uh, I didn't really you know, pass. Uh, can I fill you in on what's happening with Kill Team now? Yes. Uh, Kill Team Nightmare has uh, just gone for pre-order today. It's already sold out. So if you didn't want it, you're too late. Um, no, there's more to it, sorry. Uh, what else? Mandrakes and Night Lords. Um, they are here to stay. Night Lords, in my opinion, seem very strong. I think they're going to be a very strong beginner. Uh, team at every level is what I mean, because they're going to be very durable, because they're Marines, they're APL3, all that good stuff. Um, I think they're going to be, if not top tier, you know, definitely upper, upper tiers. Um, and I think it's all going to be better, and they're, they seem also very easy to play. You just run in and kill stuff, and that's them done. And they're going to be very good and effective at doing that. There you go. Mandrakes, on the other hand, are um, a bit more questionable. I came away saying Mandrakes are... <clears throat> possible. I'm not really sure. Uh, like, they have such an interesting new mechanic, like core mechanic, to bring into the game that I don't even know what... Like, how they're really going to pan out. You know? Um, so, I assume... I'm just going to say mid-tier. However, I'm saying mid-tier on the basis that they might go, like, up or down. Uh, like, drastically. They might turn out to be absolute trash. Or, they might be absolutely top-tier. Because it's just a mechanic we haven't really seen yet. So, in general... In general, you know, it's very hard to guess how good or bad a team will be when you first set eyes on it. Like, you know, we've all had our bad takes. We've all said, oh, this team's amazing, this team's terrible. And then being proven wrong a little bit later. <coughs> but I think Mandrakes, because what they do is relatively new uh, and... Yeah, I think they're going to be one that surprise us. But whether they surprise us in a good or negative way, we don't know. Is, is you know, yeah. Silver's good, love. I was going to ask, how long did it take to sell out? Baby, I sold out the minute I was born. As soon as GW offered, I was like, yeah, baby, I'm a sellout. Um, I believe it was like, it was, you know, it wasn't into the dark levels. Um, it wasn't inst It wasn't five minutes before it went live, but it is sold out now. Um, I'm not entirely sure how long it uh, took to sell out, unfortunately. Am I going to run Night Lords? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they're going to be a, a, a really good team to play. Um, if you don't want to think too much, you just want to run and hit stuff. Yeah, I, you're good in melee, um, you get mortals on the charge, yeah, I think you're going to be a really solid team. Um, I guess the question is, are they going to get a higher win rate percentage than legionaries? You know, because they're basically a team that you could proxy as them, and vice versa. That's a tough one. I think the answer is yes, but there won't be much in it. Um, but I, I still think that, you know, 
well, I think Nurgle Legionaries would beat them, though. Uh, no, Nurgles take Mortals. Mm. I haven't actually thought about that. However, at the moment, the, the top tier players are saying that um, if you're running Legionary, you need to be Zinch. Not because Zinch is good into AP weapons, but because it's better than nothing. Um, Legionary aren't dominating at the moment, so it's not, it's not the end of the world. I just, you know, that's what people are saying. Today was the most concerned I'd be in about getting a kill team box from GW in Canada. Uh, what do you mean, put into a random spot? Is that what they did? That doesn't make any sense. Why did they put you in a random spot? Surely, if you're first in line, you're first in line. As I said, yes, I wanted to buy Pyro and Blood today, but I, I didn't. So if they have a new queue system, I don't know what's up. You know, I've gotten carried away. I apologise. I was going to stop the stream after screen stream after I did this, but I really want to just get the bolt gun metal done because then I can clap myself on the back um, and I can finish this team with just a wash basically after that. And indeed, I do have to do the uh, the grass as well. But that's fine, I can handle that. And then I have to tidy them up. Number one key to being a good painter is have the patience to tidy up your mistakes. Number one thing people on the internet don't have, patience. So there you go. Is what it is. <clears throat> How's the Inquisition team doing these days? That's the one that'll get me back into Kill Team again. Um, Dex, have you actually played Kill Team this edition? I feel like you haven't. Unless I'm misremembering, but... It's okay to say you're not gonna play Kill Team, you know? Um, how are they doing? They took a few nerfs because they were pretty strong and I th they seem to be in a fine place. Um, they are doing well if you're a good player. Uh, otherwise, you know, ultimately they're just a bit of a, you know, seven, seven wound team. So you've got to deal with that. Uh, there you go. My understanding is you still just always take breaches. They're still the best. Okay. Fair enough. That's a shame. It's a shame. No, breaches are fine. Honestly, if breaches hadn't turned out to be so OP, um, I'd probably play them. Because I liked the colour scheme I did with them. Alas, twas not to be. <coughs> um, it's okay. Uh, never apologise for extending the stream. Well, I think we should. I think we should. Because if I was to just stop streaming, we could all get on with our lives. Instead of being stuck in this limbo. This hobby limbo. You could all be off watching a, a good video essay at the moment. I'm currently watching a um, Halo story retrospective. So that's, that's what I'm doing with my life. Uh, once I stop this stream, that's what I'm going to go watch. You know? Because I just love being balls deep in pussy 24-7, clearly. That's, that's what's going on there. Have we had a new edition? Uh, in 2021 we did, yes. That's right. I heard you just use the specialist and then sauce do the fighting. Uh... That was my official stance on 
on how to play them. Yes. <clears throat> like, if you had to see your Brewsters, enjoy. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna pack up soon here. Yes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Um, yeah, I think, like, if you want to have an easy run of Inquisition, just run your Five Sisters of Silence. I think you're going to do fine. You're probably not going to, like, dominate tournaments. You're probably not going to, you know, win a, a competitive one. But I think you're going to catch some people off guard, and I think you're going to do fine. Um, you are going to lack ranged firepower a little bit. Which is obviously something that the breaches bring. But there we go. That's the trade-off. You get to go melee cray-cray. Had to go through the grocery store just in the parking lot. Good. Good to know. Oh, uh, Logan White. I missed it. Sorry. It's okay. I talked to my buddy at the, my local store and he's holding a kill team when he gets them in two weeks. Great. I hope he gets them in. Because that's kind of the other fear. Like, um... That, that local stores don't get them, you know? Which is, uh, they, they're allowed to place their order, and then GW just turned around and said, yeah, no, we, we don't have them, you know? <clears throat> I think Legionaries, uh, yeah, I think Legionaries came out around when I had my last game. Okay, all right, so you have played some. That's fair. You've, uh, you've proven me wrong. Congrats. Not a hard thing to do. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. Don't put it on the CV is all I'm saying. Uh, I've been looking at the blooded kill team, but I'm not sure yet. They look fun. Well, the blooded team, of course, the ultimate example team for where everybody was wrong. Collectively, as a community, we, we were wrong about blooded. Everybody said they were the worst team. They were not the worst team. <laughs> they were not. Uh, so, you know, that's always a good one to point out. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people have taken to the blooded since they were proven to be pretty strong. Um, so, yeah. Go ahead and play them. You won't be disappointed, I assume. But, you know, they're, they're still primarily a 7 wound team, so they're not... They're a fragile team, you know, you know, you need to know how to play to, to play them, I would say. <coughs> uh, I don't really like Sauce TBH, I'd rather run, oh, we'll run Breaches though, they're stronger. Good. Uh, I've been looking at the blooded. I have them, but uh, Buddy and I played Colts vs. Inc. And we were both put off by both teams. Yeah. You were both put off by both teams. So what, you both left and said, yeah, my team sucks. Or your team sucks? Like, yeah, okay, well. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that can happen. That can happen. Breaches were clutch, haven't tried sauce. No, breaches are better. Let, let's be very clear. I was just saying, if you want a bit of a, a... A bit of a brain dead version of Inquisition, then you could run Sisters of Silence. Because they... Um, they're very killy in melee. And melee inevitably means you don't have to think too much. You just charge in, right? And, and that's that. Melee is easier to play than ranged. Even though the game, I think, if I'm honest, I think Kill Team should tone down how strong melee is. Because I don't think the game is meant to be played in melee. It's clearly a shooting game. But melee is so strong. And I get that thematically that they want it to be strong because it's lethal. I do understand that. But it's strong enough that you can, you don't have to shoot, and it is ultimately a shooting game. I don't know. Hot takes, hot takes. 
Hot takes or brain dead takes? You decide. <clears throat> Blooded look cooler as foretold. Very true. They do look pretty cool. They do look pretty cool. I concur. And uh, unless I'm missing something, which I probably am, I believe I've done all my bolt gun on that. Delightful. And I'm done. I'm done. Smashed it. A mere hour and 57 minutes. A mere. Um, let's talk to the chat. Let's have a chat. And then I'm off. So. I agree. Two hours is enough, isn't it, chat? Let's not, let's not drag things out. So, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. And also for watching the stream. If you made it to the end of the stream, I'd like to give you a big... Triple hello. Thank you very much. Uh, well, this has been fun. Thank you for sitting with me as I uh, get my, my Black Talon squad um, finished. In an ongoing sort of way. They're not finished. Um, but yeah. All right, let's catch up with chat and then we can sign off. I don't know how much the amount of stock f gets gets current to the play issue. Yeah, no clue. We, we will never know. We will never know. No. Um, GW games have always skewed hard to melee. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I think that the, I'm going to say Band-Aid, although it's just a function, um, that they put over the top of it is... Um, Terrain. They use terrain to balance their games instead of adjusting the severity of ranged or shooting, uh, ranged or melee, which is fine. Like that's an option. That's an option. Agreed with weekend minis. I think in big forty k melee is also strong in the shooting. Yeah, yeah. But, um, I believe so. If you get, but that's how it should be, right? Like if you get into melee, you've had to cross the board to do that. Therefore, you if you get into melee, you should probably be killing. The thing is, with Kill Team, it's a shooting game because you get to decide when you get shot or not, thanks to the line of sight and the order mechanics. So I would argue it's a bit different. It is still dependent on terrain. You need enough terrain. But you get to decide, okay, I'm going on engage. Um, see you, lads. Take care. Goodbye, Manuel. Logan White, good stream, man. Hope you have a good day. Take it all. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Um, hope you stay gangster. Hope you stay hydrated. I'm going to finish off my Pepsi Max and um, play some Redfall because I'm, I'm quite enjoying that game at the moment. Uh, so have a good one, everybody. 